Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to DevToberfest land. Let me get this right. DevToberfest week three, day four of week three, Thursday, which means all sorts of lovely, awesome, low code, no code. And I've got a super special uh, speaker for this session and also the next session, uh, my good friend and colleague, Archana. But before I introduce Archana and uh, let Archana uh, go ahead with everything, Everything. I'm just going to share my screen and make sure everybody's aware of all the wonderful sessions we've got here today for DevToberfest. So in, uh, in no particular order, but reading sort of through the day, these are my times, by the way. So it's 8 a.m. my time right now. We have learn to build processes with SAP process automation, followed more or less directly in the next hour, also with Archana. Uh, develop process extensions with SAP process automation, that's to do with actions. And then later on today, we've got more about uh, performance with processes, automation with bots, and also a little bit more on process automation with some really cool uh, examples. You can read more about uh, what's going on today in uh, Michelle Maudi's wrap up and look forward to week three. So I'll put the link to this uh, blog post in the chat shortly. But without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing again and uh, yeah, say hello and welcome to uh, Archana. And Archana, please uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and then take over. Thank you, DJ. Um, and hello and welcome from my side as well to all the curious learners who, who are joining us today in this uh, in this session of the Deptover Fest. Uh, now let me share my screen. Um, DJ, you have to make me the co-host, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought you already were. Here we go. Participants, completely my fault. More make co-host. Make co-host. There we go. Yes, Bye. perfect. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this session is about um, building processes with SAP process automation. So before I go into the tools, so believe me, this, this whole session will be more about tools showing you how uh, to build a process, to add a forms, to add a decision. But just before, I wanted to show you something about process automation because this is the first time we are introducing you to process automation. So SAP Process Automation Service is a part of SAP Business Technology Platform. And this is a combined offering of SAP workflow management and SAP robotic process automation. So these two were, the, uh, were independent services in the past, but now we have combined the capabilities of these two services into one single offering of in form of SAP Process Automation. So what you see on the screen are different capabilities of of SAP process automation. And this is also what we are going to take you to through a live example and show you in the tool. Um, I mean, how, how each of them can be built, can be deployed and can be used for any of the automation needs. So um, starting with is a process. So we have introduced a new process builder um, through which you can build processes <clears throat> and workflows in, in, in SAP process automation. So process is nothing but, you know, a streamlined uh, activities which you would want to uh, which you, where manual interventions are still available then we have forms again we have a new form builder which is a drag and drop approach to which you can build the forms which are then shown in the my inbox for for like it could be an approval form it could be like sending notification it could be validating you know your invoices and so on then uh, we have uh, decisions and business rules. So uh, wherever you have complex rules which you want to automate and move it out from the process and application logic, then we have an embedded capability now with decisions uh, where you can build the rules and you can just integrate those rules very seamlessly with process or bots. Um, then we also have, uh, you know, automations. So these are nothing but an RPA bot. And the wherever, you know, there are mundane manual tasks that you would want to automate using the bot technology. So here uh, we have task automations and then we have process visibility to get an end-to-end -end visibility into your processes. 
plus besides these uh, con uh, besides these capabilities we also have pre-built content so there are close to 350 plus bots and 90 plus workflow based uh, content packages that are available for different industries and for different lob use cases uh, in case you want to kickstart your automation without the need to bring the uh, build these processes from the scratch so this is our complete portfolio of sap process automation so in this first session I will cover processes, I will cover forms, and I will cover decisions. In the subsequent sessions, um, my colleagues will cover visibility, task automation. So, so let's get started and let me take you now to the tool. Okay, so um, before you start with process automation, the first thing is setup. Okay, so uh, we have provided a booster to set up your account with SAP process automation capabilities. So you will find the booster in your global account and it's under uh, digital process automation category. Uh, you will basically see two boosters. One booster is basically to set up your uh, free tier account in case you want to start uh, your process automation journey with just a POC or trying it out for free. And then for enterprise accounts, this is the setup that you would uh, need to start. Okay, so um, uh, so you can run the booster. It takes close to four to five minutes to, to run. And then it will set up different components. Like, as I said, a process, the rules, um, the, the RPA, the visibility, all these different components and, and all the kind of roles, entitlements will be set up. So once you have run the booster, then you can go into your sub account and there is where uh, you know uh, the whole setup is done for sap process automation so the first thing that you will notice is in the entitlements so <clears throat> So um, Booster will actually add the needed entitlements, um, which is being enabled in the global account into your sub account. Uh, then it will um, add the instances um, and subscriptions. So if you go to instance subscription, you will see that a new subscription has been added, which is with the name of SAP Process Automation. So this subscription is a direct link uh, to the new application development workbench that we have. Uh, apart from this, uh, there will be role collections. So we have three role collections. Uh, so these are the three role collections with different roles. So and each role collection targets a different persona, depending upon you want to give uh, the, uh, the roles to admin, to a developer or a pure business users who just want to log in uh, into the launch pad and just want to approve tasks or start the process and so on. So depending upon which user you would want to give uh, the access to, you can um, either assign the whole role collections or you can also create your own role collection and then individually assign these different roles. So whichever is preferable. So here for my user, um, I have, uh, so when, when you are running the booster, it will actually ask you which user you want to give which roles or uh, collections. And then once you select it, if you see here, my user already have the needed role collections. So these are the three role collections I've added because I just wanted to be the admin, the developer and participant for today's uh, session. So this is about the setup. Now let's go into the tool. So I will click here and as, as an, you click here, you will be taken to a new uh, you know, application development workbench, which is a unified uh, you know, space from where you can create uh, your processes and also your applications. So if you have your app driver, so you already had a session on app driver. So if you have your app driver enabled in this account, then you will be able to create your applications plus your processes all from the same lobby. So this is uh, this is the lobby what you are seeing on a screen, and this is a completely new user interface uh, for building processes, for building forms, for automations, and for any kind of different other capabilities that you I want to add with your process. Good. So what 
I want to build today is a very small and a simple use case of business partner approval. Okay, so um, so we will create a form, a start form, uh, with some fields that have to be filled um, related to the business partner. Then, uh, uh, as soon as the form is triggered, I mean, is um, is uh, there will be a button which, when pressed, a process will be started, and in that process, we will have a very one step approval process uh, based on the data. Then. Um, once the approval is done, uh, then we will send a mail notification uh, to the to the user uh, to the requester saying that you know you you have your approval have been I mean your approval have been accepted or your new request for business partner has been accepted and then uh, you know um, there will be also a rejection branch so this is a very very small use case just for today's uh, workshop that I've picked up and later on uh, we will add a decision into the same uh, process and, and with the decision I will talk about what we will do with the decisions once we reach there okay so let's get started so let's create a business process now okay so i will say Okay, so I have um, I have created a business partner pro uh, project now. So now everything um, in will be now created inside it. So you will see these options of different capabilities. So now once the project is created, which is nothing but a collection of these different artifacts. So you can now inside this uh, project, you can create a process, you can create forms, you can create decisions. Uh, you can also create automations um, and also data objects. So what change that we are bringing in is first thing is that uh, there will be a common data type. So once you create a data type, um, let's say an approver data type or business partner data type, uh, this data type, you can reuse it across different processes and, um, you know, uh, across different decisions, across different, uh, you know, automations. You really do not have to worry about the data transfer transformations as it was in the past. So if you would have used, uh, want to use a decision inside a process, so the same data type will flow across and you do not do any kind of complex data transformation. The second thing that we are bringing in is a reusability. So anything that you create here can be reusable in the same project or also across the project. Okay, so let's say you have created an approval form and now you want to reuse that approval form. So you can definitely create um, either copy the form in the same uh, project or you can also duplicate or copy the form into any other project as well. So this, these are the two uh, things that we have uh, changed when uh, when we merged you know these two different services into one uh, offering so let's go ahead and create a process okay so i will say okay so this is a new process builder Okay, so, um, and this process builder is a total citizen based process builder, which means you really do not need to know any kind of BPM and based technologies, or you do not need to need know uh, BPM notations or JavaScript or dual expressions to configure and create your process. So it's completely no code. So um, as soon as the process gets created, you will see a trigger. Trigger is nothing but you have to specify to a process as how the process will start. Should it start with a form or should it start with an API? So depending upon your use case, uh, you can do that. Going forward, we will also bring in events, which means you can start this process with events also. But for now, we have two options of so starting it with a form or starting it with an API. So let's start uh, for this for this session. I have kept both, but let's start with the form. So let's create a new form. Okay, and let's open the form editor. 
Okay, so now this is the new form editor where you need, need not know any kind of UI5 technologies. Uh, uh, and with the given layout and the input options, you can uh, you can build your forms with just drag and drop options. Okay, so um, so currently um, every we are releasing you know new features every two weeks. So and the form build and the form builder in, will is becoming richer and richer by every two weeks. So uh, go. Going forward, you will see, um, I mean, we already have a file upload option, so you can already upload attachments. Then we also are coming up with, you know, value help, which means you can attach your value help with the form. Let's say you want to fetch in the details from S4HANA systems and so on. And then we also are coming with an option, um, um, option buttons and so on. So these input fields will keep increasing every day. And going forward, we'll also be integrating it with AppGyver. Okay, so um, let's let's build a very simple form. Okay, so I've dropped in the header. Then let me just put in here saying. Okay, now. Uh, let me start putting in the input fields uh, where I need some information. So I say, okay, please enter initials and I'll make it read only. Then I will say, okay, your first name. This is also a read only, uh, sorry, required field. This is also required. Then again, another text field which says last name required. Okay. And so, Cool. Now let me use another feature of drop down option where I'll put a category here. So which kind of business uh, business partner category um, is? So I will say um, add an option. So one, and then I will say two. So one is actually uh, because eventually we'll be posting this business partner to S4 HANA. So that is why we have to be very close to what S4 HANA data types are. So one means if an individual is applying, two means if an organization is applying and three means if a group is applying. Okay, so we have put up a category, then we can just put uh, two more fields very quickly, organization name, and search term. Good. So my, my form is now ready. So uh, I have these fields to be filled in and there is a pre-configured uh, button of submit, which means as soon as it will be submitted, the process will be triggered. So now my form is ready. Next, uh, what I have to do is I wanted to add a condition here. Okay, so when you click on plus, you get all the all the available artifacts. So if you see here, this is what reusable means, right? So all the forms that you have created in the project or all the decisions and actions, whatever you have created will start appearing in for uh, if you want to reuse them. Okay, so here now I want to add a, a conditional flow. Uh, so I'll add a condition here and I will say, okay, if, you know, if my category is not equal to one and you know, my organization is not equal to SAP. So I would want to go for approval only if it is, uh, if the organization, if it is an individual, if it is not a um, launch for individual and the organization is not SAP, then only I want to go for approval. For all the other cases, I just would directly want to go ahead and start creating um, uh, the business partner. Now here again, now this next thing will be that we want to add an approval form here. Right, so you see the difference between the form and an approval form. A form will have a submit button, which means you really do not want to uh, to take any kind of actions from the user, but you just want some information, and this uh, and just one submit button. And then for approval, which means there will be two flows, or um, where what will happen when you approve and what will happen when you reject. Now, if you're also wondering why only two buttons and why they are static, yes, we know that. Uh, so we will going forward will also make it more dynamic that means you can add more buttons and also you can control what needs to go with these buttons okay so for now let us add a new approval form this is approve 
business partner. So I've created a new firm here. So now the first thing, let's go and create the form and define what should be the fields in the form. Okay, so uh, let me again add a header fields, which will say, then some more information, you know, Good. Now I will just want to have the same data that we entered initially. Now um, I will just say, okay, one section of the basic data. And then I'll again, again, the same thing that we did there. But here, because it's just for approval and you really do not need uh, the approver to enter anything. So you can just say read only. Okay. So I'll just say initials, read only. Then this is first name is also read only. Then I'll just say last name. And one last thing of organization. Good. And after that, um, because it's an approver, I would want to also get some, uh, you know, some comment from the approver. Uh, so I will I will add a text area. Okay, and this I'll make it required and keep it open, right? So which means approver can enter his um, thing. So I mean, I will just move it up because I don't need it down. Just move this here. Cool. Okay, so now my approval form is also also ready. And if you see here, there are already pre-configured button of approve and reject. So I'll just save this form and go back on to in here. Okay, so as soon as you add an approval form, now all the forms uh, besides the start form will appear in the inbox of the, uh, of the you know, recipient, whichever is defined with. So all the tasks, be the approval task, be the simple task, whichever is gets translated into task and will appear in the inbox. So there is some configurations, you know, that you have to do here with respect to, uh, uh, when you are, when you, uh, I mean, these fields will actually appear in the my inbox as a subject. So let's say I will say here, okay, approve, and then I'll put um, approve first name, then I'll say last name, business partner request. Okay. I, I, you can put a description, you can change the priority. I'll for now, I'll just keep it medium and then come to recipients. Now, recipients, um, you know, could be um, like a comma separated group of recipients or, you know, or a group of recipients. So group of recipients, what will happen is, so uh, this task will reach to all the users in that group. Okay, and then any one of them can claim it, which means that which which tells other users that he's working on it, and then the inbox task will vanish from all the other, uh, uh, from other inboxes, or he can he cannot claim it and just he can directly approve it also. Uh, so depending upon um, um, like where you have a comma separated list of recipients, you have a group of recipients, or also I'll show you uh, when we will work with decisions that you can also write rules to determine who will be approving it so that it becomes more dynamic rather than uh, some hard-coded set of values. Okay, so for now, what I'll do is uh, because I don't have recipients defined and I don't have any, I mean, I don't have any decisions to tell me that who will be approving it. So for now, I'll just put it that whoever has started the process will also be approving it. The next thing is mapping. So mapping is important uh, because, as I said, you are in, you are bringing in the reusability here. So um, in which context you want to use the form with is defined with this with this input thing. Okay. So um, so now I will say okay, pick my first name from uh, from the start form, initials from the start form, last name from the start form, and organization name. Good. So now my form is complete. I'll just save the work. Uh, now the next thing that will that will come is okay. Once it is approved, I really want to send a mail. Okay. So I will just say um, approval, approval notification, 
and two is again i will send it to me and then the subject or you can also send it to the emails here so okay so whichever email is defined i will send he is the that's the request or email i'll just send it here and then in the subject it will be okay sorry so anything that you can type in the subject Yeah, now let me just go and open the mail body. And so here I'll say, dear initials, first name, last name, comma. Interest. We are happy to inform that you have been accepted as a new business partner. Yes. Okay, so that's that's how you can. And then uh, if you want, uh, you can also put a comment from approver here. Um, you can find the comment from approvers. And then I'll just say apply. <coughs> and then for rejection, uh, you can also either send in another email or you can also create a new form, uh, which will be basically for a rejection form. So let's let me just create a new form here, uh, which will be a business partner rejection form. Cool. Okay, again, here you can say your request for first name, last name has been rejected. And I can just make the priority as high. I will set the user as this one. And then I'll just go into this. Um, very quickly, I'll just uh, write something here. Yep, and uh, then we will just add uh, one paragraph. Your request has been rejected for the reasons. And here I will put in the text area message from approver. and make it read only because we will pick this from the approval thing and yeah, that's it. So that's the rejection form. Um, and I will just say end here and to this branch, I'll anyways uh, put this to an end. Okay, so now my process is ready. So um, this is a very small business partner approval where there's a start form, there is an approval form, there is a notification email, and then there is an also a rejection notification via a form. And then it's a small conditional branch here. So you can have an and and or based conditions here just to control the flow of your process. Now, once you have created the process as a life cycle, you have to release the process and then you have to deploy the process. So releasing of a process will create versions. Uh, it's basically, you know, storing and locking your state of the process so that in future, if you want to work with it or if you want to deploy any previous versions, you can do that. So let's meet. Okay, so this here, I think we have not defined the input. So that's why it was saying that. So now let's save this. And let's release the process. Good. So now once the process is released, you will see a deploy options here. You can click on deploy and then um, this process will be deployed. Only the deployed versions of the process are available to be consumed. 
Now, uh, how to run the process? So, um, because this process was started with a form, okay, so, um, so when you go into the deployed version of the process, you will see the form link here. So, this is a direct form link. So, I will just do a copy here and um, I will just paste it on the browser so you know that form will automatically load but let's say you want to embed this form uh, you want to embed this form into your launchpad then this is a launchpad configuration link so you have to create a, a launchpad tile of process trigger and give this as a uri so uh, if you see here i have done that uh, for the launchpad so if if you have already configured that uh, you can see that uh, in the launch pad itself. So um, it will take some time to come up. Okay, so if you see, this is this is the tile for the new uh, business process. So I already had a similar process created and I took the same link that, that I showed here, uh, this launchpad configuration link and, has, and have embedded it into the launchpad. So when you click on that link, it will also open exactly the same form. Okay, so, um, so now what I will do is, um, okay, so now this is our form that we just created. So let me just, uh, you know, enter the details and okay and select a category and, and a search term and an organization name okay and i'll do a submit good so now my my start form have been filled and my process has been triggered so in the application development workbench itself, you will see the monitoring apps. Okay, so these monitoring apps is basically for administrative purposes where an admin can go and monitor the processes, automation jobs, and different other um, activities related to process events and so on, um, uh, just to see how the processes and these different artifacts in the run times are performing. So now let's go into the process and workspace workflow where all the processes that are being triggered in this tenant will be shown here. So this is this is the, if you see here, this is the project name and this is the process that we just triggered. Okay, so this is um, what you see on your screen is actually uh, the admin view of the process instance details. So this is a process instance. It gives us some kind of metadata information about what is the instance ID, when was it created, who created, and so on. Then uh, there is an execution log. So execution log will just show you how the process has progressed uh, right from starting and how different steps in the process uh, have been uh, you know, um, completed. So here, if you see the process started, the condition was reached. And now this is one task that is waiting into the inbox of this recipient. Um, and you can also see the context. So context is nothing but the process context that is flowing across with the workflow. So as and when each activity in the workflow finishes, this process context will be refreshed. So uh, now this is waiting in the inbox. So let's go into the inbox. So you will see, so for developers, the inbox link is directly on the top right corner of the application development workbench. So if you click on the inbox, so an inbox will open. So inbox is an application that is shipped with SAP process automation where the task uh, for the recipients appear. So I have logged in um, as my user. So all the tasks that I am entitled to work upon will be shown in this screen. So uh, um, if you see here, this is a new task that has come up for the approval. So I will just say approved and uh, Okay, so let's go back and refresh this and see what has happened. Okay, so if you see here the approval, uh, because the approval finished, so the approval task has reached into my Outlook. And if I just want to share, show you my Outlook. So you see this, um, 
this is the mail that that I have received uh, um, after the task got completed. So this is the whole flow of you know of the different actions as what we what we saw. Let me just close this. And this this process is completed. Now very quickly, let's go back to our process. So this was our process that we created. Now what you can do additional in this is that you can also create a trigger. Uh, so I have also already kept it created in one of the other project. And I'll just show you as how you can start the same process with an API trigger, okay? So that is the same process that we saw. And here, if you see, instead of creating, um, So instead of creating a, a via a form, you can also create the process via an API trigger. So when you are creating a process via an API trigger, you have to define the input, right? So what is an input? So for that, you can either directly create the fields or you can also create a data type. So here, if you see, I have created a data type of business partner with the same field. And this is the data type that I associate with my start trigger. So with my trigger form, I'll associate the same um, business partner. Plus, if there are any additional fields that you would want to pass, you can do that as well. So now what, what you are telling is that this process have to be triggered via an API and not via start forms, which means if you want to integrate this process with an AppGyver, that means you want to build an application in AppGyver and start the form from an AppGyver or any standalone UI5 applications if you have, or if you want to call from any third party. So if you want to call workflow via API, then you have to add an API trigger. So again, once you add an API trigger, you release and deploy, and then then you can call it via the API. So all the APIs, so we have already published our APIs in API Business Hub. So you can go to SAP Process Automation category in the API Business Hub and you will see all different APIs that are available. Now to run the process, you have to go into Processes and Workflows section and you have to go into Workflow Instances and the Post. So this is actually the API call that will create a process or start a process. So now let me also go and show you where the postman. Uh, okay, so um, this is the host of the uh, of the API call. So how do you get this host? So you get this host uh, um, from a process instance. Okay, so in the process cockpit, um, sorry, in the BTP cockpit. You also have to create an instance of uh, SAP process automation service type. So once you create an instance, and then in the inside the instance, you have to create a service key. And with this service key, you actually get all the information uh, with uh, with an API endpoint. What is the client ID, client secret, and token URL? So all this information you get from the API key. And once you get this information is, is then you can trigger your process using an API. So if you see here, this is the URL and this is the same URL that is mentioned here from the service instance credentials. So API, and this is the rest endpoint. okay? So using this whole URL, you can actually post the data. Now the, uh, the post, to post the data also, the format is fixed and that you can find in the API reference. So if you go into an API reference and you see that your body has to be of this type, you have to give a definition ID and you have to give the context with which you want to start the process. So, uh, and how do you get the definition ID? So, um, so if you see here, uh, when you are when you have started the instance of the process, you get the definition ID. So this is the actual definition ID that you will give. So um, so this is the definition ID, and then the context, right? So context is however you have defined it, and then if you just send this, um, so and and if you okay, so this is unauthorized because I have to get a new token. So I'll get the new access token. And I'll just send it again uh, with this body. Yeah, and if you see here, a new process got triggered. And this is, again, the metadata information. And if I run, come back here and refresh, so you will see that this uh, this process again got triggered. Cool. So this is, you know, um, this is how you can also start the process from the process trigger. Now, next, 
what we wanted to do uh, is we we will now uh, would want to add a decision into the process now what is a decision okay so a decision is a way as how you can build complex rules into a more compact tabular kind of a structure so why decisions uh, because you know if you want to if you will add decisions or rules directly into your processes or application it might complicate the whole application and process with a lot of gateways or these uh, these conditional flows instead um, and and second reason is that these decisions change often because you know the rules keep changing uh, you know every quarter or every year or after a couple of years and then it will be very difficult to go and adapt your applications or processes instead why not extract the logic or the decision or the business rules logic into a decision um, capability of sap process automation and then it's very easier uh, for business users also to go ahead and make changes to these decisions okay so let's introduce uh let's introduce a decision here mm, so let me first go into the editable mode go into the process and now let's add a decision here so uh, what i will do is i will add a decision because of a search term so in a typical scenario in the business partner the search terms are sometimes not filled but for for my company requirements a search term has to be filled so i will create a decision for that but there could also be other examples like you can also create decisions for getting getting a, who will be approving it let's say if a category is one or companies are these or the region is this then these are the persons who should be approving it so but for the sake of uh, the simplicity i will create a very simple uh, simple decision then i will say search term okay so now my decision is directly added into my process and now i'll open the decision editor so this is also a new decision editor that we have provided which which abstracts a lot of uh, you know information and gives shows only the information which is required for a business user or a citizen developer to be filled actually um, a, a decision behind the decision there's a decision model which contains a project which contains a data type which contains a rule set a rule service and your actual rules so when you create the decision actually these these different artifacts are created in background for you and um, and you need not create any of these only what you have to create is your rules so um so this is a new you know uh, user interface uh, for modeling and managing decisions so on the left you see a decision diagram where you see the input uh, what will be the input given to the decision and what will be the output and then this is a rule service this is a search term decision rule service which will be actually executed in the process so first let's define the input so uh, to define the input now you need a data type right so uh, because uh, rules always works with a data type so let us go ahead and create a data type here so i'll click plus i'll say create and a data type so i'll create a business partner data type and in here again i will add the same Fields. Okay. okay, and um, then I'll create another field which is last name. Then I'll create another field organization. Initials category. Let me just keep it simple for now. Okay, so I've created all these different fields. Now I go back to the decision table. And uh, what I will just do now is I will add the input parameters. So I'll say BP business partner input. And this is again the same description. And I will say approve. Okay, I will select the business partner the same as an output. I will say BP output.
so i do not want to choose another uh, type because i will pick up i will just in this it is just like um, see if the search term is empty or null and then assign um, a search term so that's why my input and output is same but let's say you want to work with approval so you can say okay if my approval is this then uh, i mean if my input is this then approval so there then maybe input and output could be different now i just quickly go into the rules and i will just say search term search term rule okay next step i will okay first thing what i will just do is i will just make it a text rule and then on pp rule i'll just say if the search term okay sorry i didn't add it a search term here which is important okay Okay, now I will just come back here and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. So this is the BP output and I'll say the search, I have to fill the search term and I'll create the rule. So once the rule is created, then uh, this is a simple text-based rule. We also have a decision-based rules where it's more tabular form. So here, if I'll say if, you know, now we have a rich expression library that you can use to define as complex conditions as you want. So if I say this is like, you know, equal to empty, so this is empty. Comparison, I'll say equal to, and then it is empty. Then the search term, what I just want to see is, okay, some search term I want to give it. So I'll just say, okay, BP input, um, give me the organization. So, so just put the search term, whatever is the organization name, just put it as a search term. Okay, so now my decision is also available now and ready to be consumed. So let's see what is the problem here. Okay, so decision object is saved successfully. Good, so this is how you add decisions. Now, because decision, again, decision is also a reusable artifact. So when you add it to a process, then you also have to define the input from the process content, right? So I'll just say first name, initials, organization name and search term cool okay so with this i have added uh, now you know the decisions also now if i would have would release and build uh, release and deploy this then the decision will also come into play um so i mean this is what i wanted to show you in in today's um uh, today's session now just some quick uh, words on the upcoming session now immediately after this i will also be adding now an actions into the same process which will actually create a backend s4 hana in s4 hana system a business partner then later in the day we will have peter who will be showing you the process visibility then you know uh, bapi showing you um, the automations and some really cool features that we have recently released in automation. And finally, we end up the day uh, with Eric, who will show a very fun example that he recently built uh, uh, to control his, uh, his household. So, so, so that's it that uh, I wanted to have it today. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned uh, some valuable information that we have with this new enhanced uh, user experience in form of process builder, in form of form builder, and a more integrated uh, uh, decisions editor in the same um, in the same flow. So I'm now open to questions if there are any. Yeah, thank you so much, Archana. Uh, there's been some absolutely superb conversation and questions in the chat um and uh, we have our friend and colleague antonio who's been uh, doing an awesome job of answering lots of them there's one particular one that i'll re-ask shortly just to make it clear for folks but um well in fact let's start with that one um there was a question about availability um, availability of the uh, process automation uh, in trial, in free tier, and so on. Now, um, Antonio pointed to a blog post by um, Yogananda, uh, which basically says, yeah, it's available in trial. But if, uh, I, you know, I wanted to give you a chance to answer that as well. 
Yeah. So we are available in free tier and free trial both. Um, and then we are also available in, in all, almost all AWS regions. Um, we will be soon going uh, and also the GC and on also the Ali cloud. Um, we will be soon going live with, uh, with Azure data centers and also with GCP. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, uh, again, like, like I said, a lot of the questions have been <clears throat> answered thanks to Antonio. There was one particular question that I don't think we've uh, answered yet from Mr. Radhendron. Um, so I'll read it out. Um, it, it, the question was generally asking about connection to CI CD and specifically, could a particular version of a process be automatically deployed to the production environment along with other artifacts, you know, for example, like, you know, a cap? application also, also on how is that possible yeah okay so currently um the transport is you know you have to export the project and then only you can import if you are moving from dev to q to prod uh, but in q4 and early next year we are we will be directly integrating with the transport management service and then there will be you know a more integrated way as how you can transport the um, i mean uh, all the business process projects from one system to another now coming on to ci cd so anything that you model on the application development workbench is um, is about sap process automation and appgyver only those things can be transported uh, but anything beyond has to be taken care of separately fantastic that's fantastic so um i'm gonna say um let's let's draw a line under this right now because i think most of the other questions have been uh, answered but i also wanted to point out i don't know whether you can see the chat archana but uh, lots of great feedback really cool demo and explanation a uh, really very insightful session and so on so uh Thanks everybody so much for joining, but basically stay tuned. Uh, Arjuna is, and I are going to be back in less than 10 minutes, but on a different YouTube URL. Okay, so it, it, you know, this, this particular YouTube live stream will finish and you can go back to the, in fact, I'll post the URL right now to the All the DevTober Fest sessions, Tober Best events, and you can find the URL there and find everything else that Arjun is showing on her screen right now. Let me put that back in the uh, chat. Where are we? There we go. Lovely. Bang in there. So we'll see you all. And if we don't see you, there'll be trouble. We'll see you all uh, in, in the next five to 10 minutes. Thanks, Archana, And thanks, everyone, for joining. <laughs>